Good morning, Clemson fans, and welcome into Death Valley Live. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson, and the weather is perfect, Daja. It's no going to be question. a beautiful day for football. Absolutely. I mean, this is like the perfect fall football weather. I mean, this is what you think about all year long as you get ready for the Tigers to play again. This day, this kind of weather, it's just absolutely perfect. It is. It's amazing. Death Valley Live presented, as always, by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo understands being a Tiger fan means there's no off-season with the Wells Fargo Tigers debit card, you can show off your Clemson pride 24-7. Visit wellsfargo.com to learn more. And also, the most important thing you're going to hear in the first part of the show, hashtag Death Valley Live on Twitter to win a signed Nike football. This is an amazing prize. Go on Twitter right now. Make sure you hashtag Death Valley Live. Get folks watching here with us, and you have a chance to win a signed Nike football. Oh, yeah. I mean, what what Clemson fan doesn't want that as a collectible in their man cave in there? There's that commercial. What is it she called? She shack, you know, whatever yes. you got. She shed. If you have a she, she, shed. she shed. If there you have go. a she shed or a man cave, you better go to Twitter, hashtag Death Valley Live, so you could get a signed football, potential with a signed football, to put in your man cave or your she shed. Good stuff there. <laughs> well, uh, you see some of the Tigers on the field right now. Let's take a look back at their arrival at Death Valley. Always great to see them coming in. It's a big Saturday taking on the Clemson or the Syracuse Orange and uh, Tigers arrived a little bit earlier on the buses and uh, always good to see Dabo and company doing that. You see the quarterbacks down there on the field, Daja. DJ Uyunglele could not play last week. He had some shoulder stiffness, some soreness up there, but they said earlier in the week he's ready to go and he's about to sling the football. Oh, no, he's just doing foot drills. I thought we were going to get to see him throw. That would have been perfect. <laughs> DJ, I had I you, I had you he, teed he, up he, to throw I the know. football. That was Come a on. perfect setup. But, you know, outside of potentially seeing DJ play today, which I highly think that we will, we'll likely get to see a lot of players suit up and play in today's football game. We're talking upwards of 100 players that we'll see. They played 79 of 80 of road players last week against Georgia Tech, and no question that I think we'll be well over 100 in today's game. You see Trevor Lawrence had a fantastic week last week, of course, against Georgia Tech. He has 95 total touchdowns. He needs two combined rush, rushing and passing touchdowns to pass Marquise Williams for fifth on the ACC's all-time career leaderboard for touchdown responsibility. After that, he's just got Taj, Lamar, Deshaun, and Phillip Rivers is the only four in front of him for touchdown responsibility in their ACC careers. Now let's take a look at the team arrival. Dabo and company coming down. Daja just a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah, you're seeing them here rolling in on the buses. Of course, things look a little bit different this year with what Tiger Walk and the entrance kind of looks like. But you see that we have the cheerleaders kind of there. We've got folks who are standing around gates being really smart, socially distancing and welcoming those players into Death Valley today as we get ready to take on the Syracuse Orange. Dabo looking dapper today when he came in, as most of the players do. Dabo usually super hyped getting off the bus. I saw a business focus a little bit oh, for Dabo yeah. today. He's ready yeah. to get down to it, it looks like. Yeah, you know, we talk about this, about, you know, how Syracuse plays Clemson year after year. It's, you know, the storyline of it's a difficult team for Clemson to play. And, and maybe there is a little bit more of this business focus so that you don't either get caught up in that narrative or say, hey, let's get in here and take care of business like we're expected to with this major lead that is expected over the Syracuse today. Yeah, absolutely. So again, it's Death Valley Live. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson. We've been having fun doing this all year, and the weather's cooperated today. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were inside Little John because of the know. rain. I know. I know. And and now we've got this perfect breeze coming in. The skies are absolutely clear blue, beautiful clouds. So if you're tuning in with us from home, you're missing a really good one, yes. I feel like. This mm -hmm. is like that perfect Clemson football weather. So if you're watching from home, we're doing it for you. We're experiencing it all. But we so appreciate you watching. This is for you. You know, there are so many of you who are having to watch from home due to COVID-19 and redshirting your tickets or whatever the case may be. And so Death Valley Live is for you to bring you in to what that game day spirit feels like here in Clemson, South Carolina. And we are super excited to be able to do that for you guys. We are. We've been getting a ton of great feedback as well on social media. Also, people reaching out to us directly. Just being a part of all of the pregame. If you were here today, you'd be sitting in the stadium right now doing what we're doing right here on social media for you, watching all the warm-up to the players. Looks like BT Potter going to get some kicks in. Clemson got the kicking game righted 
against Georgia Tech last week after the disastrous week against Miami with all of the blocks. So everyone's been giving us feedback. They're enjoying being a part of it. And then obviously as we get closer to game time, being a part of the Walk of Champions and then the Tigers running down the hill. Absolutely. We are taking a live look right now at warm-ups. Um, thanks to Wells Fargo, this is they're bringing you closer to the Clemson Tiger action than ever before. And we're taking a look right here at a guy who scored two touchdowns in Let's the fourth go. quarter last week against Georgia Tech. What do you expect to see from him potentially today, uh, Mark, if he's going to get in the game today? Well, I hope we see him today, right? Uh, we had the, the issue that I mentioned a second ago with DJ Uyunglele. Got Hunter in a little bit earlier than he expected to do, and he delivered with the 70 four yards passing and the two touchdowns. Not sure what the status of Tyson Pumachan is. He is not, he's on the, the playlist, right? So he could play. He did break a, a bone in his non-throwing hand. And you see it you right see there. It there. You can yeah. see it all wrapped up uh, with the pink for breast cancer awareness. Very nice there, Tyson. So we don't know if we'll see him today or not. If he does not play, then we've got an excellent chance of seeing Hunter Helms a little bit earlier, assuming that this offense for Clemson continues to roll. Yeah, and what a performance, you know, being able to step into a game last week and, and not produce one but two touchdowns. You're talking about us getting deep into the depth chart today. You're talking about four men deep down on the depth chart still scoring major points in a football game. How are you even supposed to compete with that? Yeah, the, the depth just keeps on coming and coming. And it's been the way that Clemson plays football for a number of years is that depth is just going to wear you down if you don't have the ability to keep up with them. we got to mention Will Spires, the punter, got in and had a good week throwing the football as well. Nobody in the country is really doing better than this man throwing the football right now, and that's Trevor Lawrence. He is attempting to pull within one win of the school record for wins as a starting quarterback with a number of games left in front of him. Daja, you and I almost laugh every week at all these statistics that the team is accomplishing every week. And now Trevor and Travis every single week are knocking down huge records or approaching huge records. Yeah, and you know, I talk about this, I feel like, every single week. But the poise and the leadership that this young man presents is really unlike anything I feel like I've ever seen before, you know. And, and I think even last week with a couple mistakes that we saw, you know, interceptions being thrown for the first time in a really, really long time, as you mentioned those stats week after week, it's that poise and that ability to face adversity and bring your team along and say, how are we going to perform in the face of, uh, you know, a hurdle? And so to be able to pick that up and continue to push this team to greatness, it's just, it's, it's really remarkable to watch. Yeah, Trevor's thrown one interception in the last calendar year. I Could know. you step it up, Trevor, I this know. year, please? <laughs> and then also he had 404 yards passing, 404 is the area code down in Atlanta. I just thought that was really nice uh, kismet. Uh, from last week. Amari Rogers also had an unbelievable day last week. He had the early big 80 plus yard touchdown, 161, two TDs. Amari stepping up as the biggest weapon through the air for, for Trevor. No question. And I think he is just continuing to raise his ticket this season. I mean, he has just continued to show pro uh, progress and performance week after week on the football field. And he is absolutely a weapon um, on, on this side of the ball for the Tigers. And I think, um, you know, as we look ahead and he's finishing out this season, his stock is just rising week after week. And Amari coming out of the slot uh, most of the time, right? Having the big play down the field, that's a really different dimension that we're seeing from Amari. And we haven't seen as many of the long hookup targets that we saw with T. Higgins and Justin Ross last year. Obviously, the loss of both of those guys has, uh, has hurt a little bit. So seeing Amari breaking out into that role is good. And I mentioned Justin Ross on purpose, had a helmet on this week. He's coming back from his uh, spinal surgery very slowly, but it's good to see him progressing. There's still no official word if he's even gonna be able to play football if officially again but so far everything's going great we've been pulling for Justin thoughts and prayers for him absolutely and you know talking about Amari that's what guys are supposed to do on this football team we talk about the depth it's about players being able to step up and say hey yes I've been typically put in this position as a slot receiver but let me show you that I can step up and I can climb the ladder deep down the field and make big plays yeah he's been making them all season long let's take a look at the team matchups we'll start with Syracuse one and four on the season. You see the low points per game average on offense at 19.6. 69 first downs all season long. From a rushing yards perspective, 407 yards in five games. Just 917 passing yards in five games. Total yards about 1,300. You can see why this is a very one-sided affair that we're expecting today. 
No question. You're talking about Clemson on the other side. They've got, you know, 48.4 averaging points per game, 128 first downs, 913 rushing yards, and you're talking about 1,700 passing yards for a total of 26. You know, I don't know what you're supposed to do if you're Syracuse coming into this kind of football game facing a dominant number one Clemson Tigers football team right now. They've got the major M. Big momentum is on their back, and they've, they're have they running full steam ahead. Um, to com continue to just blast and dominate this season. Syracuse likes to run the up-tempo offense. I don't know if we'll see it today. I don't know if you want to run up-tempo in, up into this defense the way that it's been playing and continue to give Clemson the football. Will Spires, the quarterback, working on his punting this week as well. It's good to see what he's doing there. We hope we don't see him a lot from a punting perspective today. It would be really interesting if we saw him again under center. I get the feeling that's going to be a one-shot <laughs> deal this year. Right. But things have been going very well for the Tigers if we see Will Spires take a snap at QB again today after the great week that he had last week under center. And he's been punting the football well. Again, somebody that you don't want to see a whole lot. He was 2 for 3 for 13 yards last week throwing the ball. You saw the 45-yard punting average. Will Spires is a senior really coming through for the Tigers and special teams. Absolutely. And we talk about last week's game, absolutely dominating performance, 70 to 3, 73 to 3, excuse me, over Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You know, that is just, it, it's really incredible. And that was even with several mistakes, right, on, uh, on the Clemson side of the football. So I think if we can minimize those mistakes, there is a great chance that this will be a very similar game and just rolling over the Syracuse Orange today. I hope that you're right. Number two, Frank Ladson Jr., the 6'3", 205-pound sophomore. Three touchdowns on the season. Frank dropped what probably would have been a touchdown on the first play of the game last week. He's been struggling a little bit with that this year. But if you remember, there's a Clemson wide receiver in the NFL, Mike Williams. I think it was the 2016 game against Auburn, I believe that it was. Dropped a number of touchdowns in that game. Obviously, he figured out how to solve that. Obviously, he <laughs> went on to a great Clemson career, made some huge catches against Alabama in the national title game, and has now gone on to a very good NFL career. Frank Ladson Jr. is going to get that dialed in soon. He's going to catch a big ball for a touchdown today. I feel very confident. Yeah, no question. Another guy that's going to make a big difference on this football team, Joe Ngata. You know, you talk just about absolute weapons, you know, at this position, the depth, the the talent. I mean, and we're getting to see that week after week, and it's developing week after week, and that's what you want to see um, in, in every position. But I think it's really important for us to talk about the difference that these guys are able to make week after week going deep down into the depth chart. And God has been struggling a little bit on the injury front. Hopefully he'll be back in there today. And one of the best stories from last week is this guy, a Joe, a Joe, 6'3", 215-pound freshman, had the touchdown last week that was taken away. He caught it. It looked like he got his feet yeah. into me and hit the pylon. They overruled it. So, hey, we'll throw a Joe, a Joe, a screen. Very athletic. You saw how he got to the end zone. He hasn't played a lot of football. He is a freak athlete. This is going to be one of those projects to watch, and you get the feeling that by the time he's a junior and a senior that he's going to be one of the top dogs here at Clemson, and he's so much fun to watch. Absolutely. Well, fans, if you're tuning in, Prisma Health wants to remind you to mask up. Whether you're inside Death Valley or watching the game in a public area, wherever you are, remember to wear your mask, be smart, and stand apart. We're a little bit over 45 minutes now away from kickoff today between the Syracuse Orange and the top-ranked Clemson Tigers. Clemson number one in the country in the AP poll, and they usually do well when they're in that position. They're attempting to go to 18-2 and two all time when ranked number one by the Associated Press. Clemson has never lost a regular season game as the nation's top-ranked team. This will be Dabo's 19th game coached at number one. That ties him with Jim Tressel for 17th all time, and he continues to fire up that list. Well, while you're talking about you know stats and facts, why don't we do a little trivia, Mark? I've, I've, this is brought to you by First Citizens. Um, you know, okay, including this year, Clemson and Syracuse have met a total of nine times. Okay? okay, of those nine meetings, how many times has Clemson been ranked in the top 25? It's going to be a lot of them. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say seven of the nine. How about all nine oh, wow. times? 
all nine times. Clemson has been ranked all nine times when facing Syracuse. Of those nine times, the Tigers have been ranked in the top three. So a total of seven times in the top three. Good grief. Seven times in the top three. Poor Syracuse. Yeah, right? I mean, what you, again, I, I feel like I keep saying it, but what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> no, that's a very difficult thing to do. But they have been able to do it. You see Dino Babers, the head coach of the Syracuse Orange, and Dabo looking like they're having a good time together. These guys are good buddies, and uh, I know they talk a lot of off the field. If you remember that loss up at Syracuse in 2017, Dabo actually went into Syracuse's locker room, spoke to the team, talked about how much he loved Dino and how much he appreciated it. Uh, and that was the last regular season loss in October of 2017 for this Clemson football team, which is just a staggering thing. Also a staggering thing is how productive this next man has been all season long. What can you say about Travis Etienne? We could, uh, we could talk the rest of the show about I it. I don't know. I feel like you have a stat every week for him that just continues to just blow my mind. Another record that he is on the verge of breaking or has already broken. I mean, it's really insane. I mean, he's just continuing to get better and better. And we heard, um, you know, earlier that this isn't even the best that people think he can be. We heard from Trevor Lawrence on the Tiger Tailgate show talking about, he's like, yo, he's not even at his top potential. There's still so much left in him, and he's continuing to learn and grow every single day. And that's kind of scary to think about that this is not even the best that people think Travis Etienne can be. You like the mix of the run and the catching of the football this year. This is the stat everybody's watching for. And I think Travis is going to get this today. This week, running back Travis Etienne will continue his assault on the ACC record book. He enters Saturday's contest 129 yards shy of breaking the ACC's career rushing yardage record. So if he gets to 129 today, he will be the all-time leading rusher in the ACC. I get the feeling Travis is going to have a monster day today against Syracuse. Their run defense has not been good all season long. Plus, even if your run defense is good, Travis Etienne finds a way. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, again, one of those stats I'm talking about. He is breaking records not only at Clemson, not only in the ACC, um, but you're talking about within the national conference as well. I mean, the entire NCAA football, it's really remarkable um, to see li a living legend is really what I like to call him because he is just absolutely making history um, and we'll be talking about him for years and years and years to come. We will, and he's the number one running back in what is a very crowded and productive running back room. Ches Malusi has had five receptions for 21 yards and a touchdown this year. Ches, of course, the 5'11", 200-pound sophomore. There's a number of the backup running backs that I am very high on. Ches Malusi is absolutely near the top of that list, Aja. We're seeing more and more of him each week. He's doing well. He's been doing well also in pass protection. I've seen him late in a couple of the games doing some of the right things in pass protection. Future is bright for this young man. Yeah, you know, that entire room, um, you know, led by Coach Tony Elliott, you talk about what a mentor in him. And, and of course, having our friend C.J. Spiller now part of that that room as well. These guys are learning from the absolute best in the game, and, and, and that's why you're seeing such great production from these young men. You saw Lynn J. Dixon in there as well, the junior running back who's been doing well. You saw a quick glimpse of C.J. Spiller. There's Lynn J. He's going to catch that football, dance on into the end zone. Hopefully we'll see that a couple of times today as well. Hey, let's take a look at the starting lineups today, presented as always by Mercedes-Benz Vans. Offense, you love to see it. The offensive line has been doing a really good job this season. You've got Carmen Bachor, Stuart Putnam, and McFadden. Of course, we talked about ETN and Lawrence. And uh, wide receiver Cornell Powell, we haven't talked about him yet, but he had a good week last week. We'll be starting with Damari Rogers and Frank Ladson Jr. On the defensive side of the ball, Brian Brissy and Miles Murphy are the two names that have been jumping out for everybody. The two true freshmen have been doing a great job. You've got Justin Maskell and Niles Pinckney. Uh, Balin Spector's in there along with Jake Venables and Mike Jones Jr. If you haven't heard, Jamie Skalski not available to play today. I think he got banged up against Georgia Tech. Also was kind of surprised just about an hour ago to find out that the defensive tackle Tyler Davis will not be available today either. So they'll be down a couple of men. Hopefully they'll be fine. You've got Booth, Xanders, Turner, and Sheridan Jones in the secondary. And Daja, this Syracuse Orange offense has not been super productive, but I'll tell you this. They love to throw the ball way down the field. So it's going to be a test for the defensive secondary today, but maybe a chance to get a couple of interceptions. Yep. 
You know, you talked about uh, mentioning that uh, that Skalski and Davis will be out of the football game today. Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on these guys being out of the game and what kind of difference you think uh, that could potentially make on the defensive side for Clemson today. Well, Jamie Skalski, of course, is the leader of the defense, the captain of the defense. So Jake Venables will step into that role today. And we were talking to Kendall Joseph earlier today on the Tiger Tailgate Show. That's a lot of responsibility right there to be right there in the middle of the field with uh, Balin Spector. Those two guys will be in charge of getting the defensive calls in, getting everybody set up the way they need him to be. And you never like to see Tyler Davis out. He's had some injury issues this year. Now he's out again this week. Such a force right there at the defensive tackle position, setting the point, setting the line right there in the middle, making it very hard to run the football up the middle. Obviously, you've got Niles Pinkney there. It can easily step in for him. And he had a great week last week, including the touchdown that he had. But it'll be interesting to watch on defense. You never like to see anybody out of the game. But having Skalski out of the game gives you pause a little bit, but this defense will be up to the challenge today. Yeah, but no question he will be, you know, coaching from the sidelines, oh, you yeah. know, absolutely. And, and, and another thing that Kendall mentioned earlier is, you know, he said he almost feels like Coach Venables is harder on that, that two and three deep you know, yes. expecting, you know, something like this happening. If that, you know, that starter is not able to make the field, as we, we talk about with these guys, and, and, and being really tough on them throughout practice as, as they pray, prepare, excuse me, for games week after week, and making sure that they, they have that confidence and, and that discipline to be able to step up in a situation like this one. You see Jake Venables right there. He'll be stepping in for Skalski today. We also saw a really nice uh, performance from a number of the linebackers last week, including Trenton Simpson, uh, the true freshman who got in and made some big plays last week. I think we'll be seeing a little bit more of him today as well. So with Skalski out, you'll see Venables. Kane Patterson will be backing him up, and you might see him in there a little bit more than you normally would today. Before that, we saw Niles Pinkney, of course, had a touchdown last week from the jumbo package down on, uh, down on the goal line including a crazy dance where he put his hand on his head and <laughs> no. juked all around that he evidently saw in an old movie just the night before, which I thought was kind of funny where, where these guys' inspiration comes from. I always thought that the touchdown celebrations were spontaneous. Shame on me. Almost all of these are absolutely they planned. planned. <laughs> yes. Mark, what do you think your touchdown dance would be? Would you go to an old dance? I mean, are you like a Cabbage Patch kind of guy? Oh, or gosh. What Any, are you doing? Anything I did in the end zone would be a disaster because <laughs> um, I am not the most rhythmic guy in the world. I think I'd take the Hunter Renfro approach. I've been in the end zone before. I'll just hand the ball to the referee and hmm. run over to the sidelines. Really? I'd go calm. You'd probably have a whole routine, right? I mean, you probably. Yeah, yeah. I'd, pro I'd probably have a whole routine. But, you know, I feel like, Mark, my advice to you as a dad would be like, stay in the pocket, you know, like don't yes. get too far outside the pocket <laughs> and start doing those dad moves when you get overly confident, you know, <laughs> like I tell you to just stay in the pocket, Mark. That's I would what, take your advice. You know, we're looking here as the guys are getting ready to take the walk of champions. Uh, this is presented to you by Wells Fargo. There they are taking the walk of champions together. This is always just really exciting to watch. It's just something special and really cool about this. And, and it just speaks so much of what this program is about. Family, being together, you know, standing arm in arm. And, and man, it's always really cool, I think, to, to watch the Walk of Champions every home game, every game. You, of course, got married to a former Clemson running back, C.J. Davidson, earlier this year. And yeah. I know that you and I, well, I have talked to C.J. about the Walk of Champions in your presence, and it was a really big thing for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think I told you that there's not exactly like assigned seats, but CJ was always right beside Coach Sweeney, you know, every time in the Walk of Champions. And I think it's just one of those things you just, it's repetition and muscle memory and you end up going back to the same place. But again, really special. And, and I get to learn so much about this program from the inside with having CJ and just talking about the development and, and what's really happened and grown over the last couple of years with this program. Some great stuff. All right, time for our special guest now from the ACC Network. I am super pumped to bring in Kelly Gramlich. Kelly, how are you doing this morning? Hi, guys. Mark, Daja, I am doing great. How are y'all? Hey, Kelly, we're good. Good to hear from you. It's great to hear you, Daja. You are doing an awesome job, by the way. It's so good to see. I think we're the, we were the same age at Clemson, so it's great to see one of my classmates doing what you're doing. 
I'm a lot older than you two. Combined, your age might be where I'm at. So people that you weren't in our class. Okay. This is a surprise. People can figure that out. Yeah, this is a big surprise to the people watching, I'm sure. Uh, Kelly, it's always great to talk to you. What are your thoughts on the ball game today? You know, it gives you pause a little bit, just that Syracuse obviously is the last team to beat Clemson during the regular season. Then that heart attack game in 2018 with Trevor Lawrence getting hurt. Are you worried at all that we could see a repeat of something like that today? No, <laughs> I am not. Um, but I do think it's important to keep those those memories in mind with Syracuse because you really don't ever let go of those, especially since we're not that far removed. The loss in 2017, it was heartbreaking on so many levels for so many people. And, you know, you still made the playoffs, but it was still a really tough loss to swallow. And then 2018, heart attack game, that's the exact right way to describe it. I think I had four heart attacks during that game. <laughs> uh, but Clemson pulled it out. And then last year, kind of exercising those demons, if you will, playing really well against Syracuse up in uh, the Dome. But I do think today, just to continue momentum, and one thing that Dabo Sweeney has brought up and others have brought up is in this uncertain times that we're in with COVID. And, you know, there's no guarantee how many games you're going to get. Who knows? You could have games postponed or whatnot. So to make an, an impression and to look really good every week, every week that you get a chance to play, I think is really important for a team like Clemson that's trying to make the playoffs. Kelly, we saw 79 of 80 players play last week at Georgia Tech, and we're talking about seeing 100-plus players play in today's game. Is there a position group that you have your eye on, recognizing that we'll you know, get deep into the depth chart? Is there a position group that you're looking at in today's football game? Great question. You know, I'm actually looking at the wide receivers, and I think part of it is, you know, we're, we want to see more Frank Ladson and, and Spectre and even some more of Amari Rogers, and you're always looking for Amari Rogers. But beyond that, a guy like E.J. Williams, who I think made some really good plays at Georgia Tech, can he continue to build, and can he possibly maybe build up some reports today with uh, D.J. Uyunglele? And then with Joseph Ngata, who we believe is going to play today and is feeling better from the abdominal strain, how is he going to look? And how are both of these quarterbacks going to be able to distribute the ball? So I guess I could add quarterbacks in there, too, um, assuming that D.J. U. gets in there. But some of these young wide receivers, I'd love to see them continue to emerge. We're hanging out with Kelly Gramlich from the ACC Network. Kelly, I think we might have a big day from both Trevor and Travis today, but which one do you think is going to have the bigger day? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go Travis Etienne because this Syracuse run defense is, oh, what's the word? Atrocious, I think <laughs> is, is the word I'm going to use. If Duke can rush for 350 on you, then... I'm really kind of nervous. Kelly, why don't you Travis start Etienne over and tell do. us how you really feel? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you just got to gotta be honest here. They they run a 3-3-5 three, three, at Syracuse, which, you know, it can work. But when you only have three down linemen, I think it's tough to slow down almost anyone. And Clemson's running a little bit of that, but they switch it up and, and bring a lot of linebackers. I, I just think UTN's going to have a day. And I also think that, um, you know, it would be really good to see someone like Lynn J. Dixon get going and get his yeah, confidence like back up against a defense like this with Syracuse. Hey, Kelly, before we let you get out of here, we're getting close to women's basketball season, so that means we'll be seeing your face a lot on the ACC Network, and that makes me happy. <laughs> well, thanks, Mark. Yes, I'm so excited for basketball season. November 25th is our start date, I believe, for strong conference action. And just from a Clemson perspective, I'm really excited to see Coach Butler's squad in year three. They're bringing in some transfers, a player like Delisha Washington, who is now eligible to play, just a tough guard that I think can really play some defense and help this team get out and run. So I'm excited to watch Clemson. It's going to be a great year in the ACC. We've got Carol Lawson in the league now. We've got Neil Ivey at Notre Dame. Louisville, of course, is always good. I think it's going to be a really, really good year top to bottom. Kelly Gramlich from the ACC Network. Always great to talk to you, Kelly. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. And remember, fans, you can tune in to today's game on the ACC Network at 12. For more information on how to find a local provider if you need one, visit accn.com. Let's see. We are getting – we're about 30 minutes and change away now from kickoff between Syracuse and Clemson. We're getting close. I know. I'm getting really excited for it. I mean, I feel like being off last week and not being down in Atlanta, I had a little bit of an itch. So it's really good <laughs> yeah. to be back in Death Valley to watch the Tigers play today. Um, you know, and, and you talk about Tigers. There are a lot of Tigers who played here in Death Valley that are now playing on the biggest stage in the NFL. Mark, talk to us a little bit about those guys. Yeah, of course, on Sundays. It's one of my favorite things now. It's hard to turn on a game in the NFL with not just one, 
one, but multiple Tigers playing in it. Deshaun Watson had a huge week last week, and he should have won that ball game. The coaching got weird late. He had 335 yards passing and four touchdowns. T. Higgins is starting to turn into a rookie breakout in the NFL. Six catches for 125 yards. He had a couple of TDs in a game earlier this year. B.J. Goodson very quietly putting together a big season for the Browns. Had 10 tackles last week. Adam Humphreys got in the end zone. Had 64 yards catching. Christian Wilkins, five tackles, three solos, one sack. And did you see Christian Wilkins after one of the plays in celebration? Jumped. Ju oh, I know. He jumped like, over what? a guy that was six feet tall. I know. Like, what do you I mean he literally ran and jumped over a six foot guy I mean and cleared it completely cleared yes he's I, a freak athlete and they always no said question. that here and you saw him be a part of the jumbo package and get in the end zone and do all of his stuff but uh, truly to be appreciated I am super pumped about Sundays in the NFL Tigers putting up numbers every week can't wait to watch him again tomorrow oh yeah it's always good always good we're watching right now you're seeing these Tigers right now getting ready for what should be a really dominating performance over the Syracuse Orange. They're coming off a really incredible performance last week at Georgia Tech and should continue that momentum today, taking them on into the rest of the season. Three straight noon games, which is interesting and caught me a little bit off guard. They played at noon last week against Georgia Tech. Obviously, that agreed with them. I know that a lot of the Clemson coaching staff likes the noon starts. Let's get up. Let's go win a football game. Let's get back and start resting up for the next week and watch everybody else in the country play. And then they'll be home again next week against Boston College at noon. And I know there were a lot of parents with young kids mm -hmm. that started celebrating because it's Halloween next Saturday. Yeah. So you can come to Clemson, enjoy the game, and then you can head on home and let your kids uh, trick-or-treat in a safe, socially distanced way. I know, and you know, we CJ and I actually talked about this um, earlier this week, just kind of randomly, how you talk about the Clemson family, and it's so true, there's every holiday this football team is doing something with players and, and coaches and their families, and they trick-or-treat every year, and, and that's what I think makes this so special and why these guys are so connected on and off the yeah. football field well because said. of that family, um, you know, environment and the family dinners and all those things. Those t small, tiny things make a huge difference in the long run of the camaraderie and the, the chemistry on a football team, and I think that's why we see such incredible performances from these guys week in and week out. See Dabo getting the troops fired up. They're raising their helmets up. You see a lot of pink out there today. It is the breast cancer awareness game. Obviously, Dabo's all in team foundation. We talked to Kathleen Sweeney on the Tiger Tailgate show earlier today. They're working with the Roar, WCCPFM.com. Uh, up here is where you can go to support that cause. They are doing all of that, raising tons of money this month. So this is the official Breast Cancer Awareness Month ball game today. So good to see all that pink out there. Yeah, and it's also the 125th season, the 125th year of Clemson football. This is presented by Lending Tree, and we are honoring that in a lot of special ways. One of those ways that you can be a part of is our fan voting. We wanted to remind you that this week is the last week to vote. The Clemson staff has put together a list of over three 300 legendary players throughout the history of Clemson football and it is your job to vote on the top 125 in honor of this year's anniversary. In addition to this you can also vote for the top 10 games in Clemson history. To participate head on over to clemsontigers.com slash 125 season 125 season. Um, that's really exciting. You can talk about uh, the top 10 games in Clemson history and top 125 players in Clemson history. Give me maybe one of your top three in games or players. What are you mm -hmm. thinking? Well, I was going to say that the 2018 game against Syracuse might be a top 10 game, a borderline mm. top 10 game for me that I have witnessed myself in Death Valley. I've been going to games here 22, 23 years or so. Uh, just because of everything, the adversity they had to overcome to win at the Chase Bryce pass to T. Higgins, and then finally getting the touchdown to seal that and then going on to the national title after that. Number one game for me, it's 2016 Louisville. That's my favorite game yeah. I've ever been to in the Valley. How about you? Yeah, I mean, at 2016 Louisville was, was – yeah, that's probably a really good one. I was not cheering then. I was mm -hmm. I was done and, and gone, and CJ and I are probably watching that game from home because we didn't actually come to games for a while there after that. So I probably watched that one from home. That's a really good one, yeah. Well, what's one of your top ones? Probably when we beat Florida State here 
at home. I remember I was working as an intern in the football office. I was standing in the play, the guest player tunnel, and I remember hugging Allie Rogers, now Fauntleroy, screaming, jumping up and down as we beat Florida State. Yeah, I mean, That's it was awesome. absolutely incredible. Very good stuff. So some keys to the game today, Daja. I'm interested in yours. I'll start yeah. off here. I think one of the keys to the game um, is, for me, getting off to a fast start. These always, of course, brought to you by Carolina Ford dealers. Getting off to a fast start for Clemson. They did it last week against Georgia Tech. If they can do that, you put uh, Syracuse, an offense that's struggling behind the eight ball. They got to play catch up all game. It could get ugly quick if they get off to a fast start. Yeah, one of mine is going to be eliminating momentum shifts. Again, I've already talked about this last week. We saw, you know, a couple busted plays. We saw a little bit of mistakes, some turnovers, that sort of thing. And I think, yes, we outplayed Georgia Tech, no question. But if we would have played a better football team, that could have been a completely different story. So I want us to eliminate those opportunities for momentum shifts especially in today's football game. The 2018 Syracuse Orange led the country in turnover margin, yes, and they, they had did. a 10-win season that year. Taking care of the football is another key to the game. Obviously, a little bit of sloppiness in the first half. Didn't really hurt them against Georgia Tech last week, but I'd like to see a turnover-free game for the Tigers. That's one of my keys, especially if they want to run this score up and get a lot of the backup set. Yeah, that was actually one of mine as well, is to protect the football. Syracuse has actually done really well again this season with forcing turnovers on the defense. So, you know, I think protecting the ball is always incredibly important. And, and another one of my key points is applying pressure. They've got their second string quarterback in Rex Culpepper, um, you know, playing for them. And I think we've got to make him feel incredibly uncomfortable. So applying that pressure and putting him in situations um, that forces him outside of his normal game is going to be another big key to this football game. One thing about Rex, have you seen his hair? He might have the second best hair in college football outside behind our Trevor. Trevor Lawrence, yes. I mean, no question he could probably still get a Tresemme deal. Deal, potentially, who knows? Trust me. <laughs> I feel like that's what I think about when I see Trevor is just, you know, as he's getting off the bus and he flips it back, I just feel like, trust me, ooh la la, you know? You need to get in touch with who, whoever his marketing rep's going to be here in a couple of months because that seems like a very logical sponsorship for Trevor. <laughs> Absolutely. You're taking a look right now inside the stadium as we've got fans who are gearing up for what should be an exciting game of football. You see a Tigers for Tata shirts there as again, this is our breast cancer awareness football game. We had a chance to talk with Mrs. Kathleen Sweeney earlier today on uh, the Tiger Tailgate show and just wanting to remind everyone who's watching right now, um, male or female, make sure you're always being up to date on your health, doing your self check assessments, getting those mammograms. Um, it's better to, to, to stay on top of that and go get checked than, than to wait. It's absolutely important for us to be uh, preventative in, in preventing uh, breast cancer. Yeah, and you can go to WCCPFM.com. There's Tigers for Tatas t-shirts, bracelets. You can make donations right there. Uh, let's send it over now to Don Munson. He had a chance to catch up with Coach Sweeney earlier this week. And this, as always, presented by Prisma Health. All right, Coach, let's reflect a little bit on the Georgia Tech game. Obviously, 73 points on the board is kind of what everyone wants to talk about. I want to talk about the defensive side, though, with the football, if we can first, because defensively may have been your most complete game. No question about that. You know, it was our most complete game as a team. You know, we it, when we've had a couple of those games where we subbed a lot in the second half, we gave up points and we didn't score points. Uh, so, you know, we stopped them. Uh, continued to play well, and we continued to score points. But defensively, uh, they were tremendous. Three takeaways and then three more stops on downs. And, uh, I mean, that play by Skowski, uh, just beating the guard and getting in there and, I mean, making the stop. So, I mean, that's almost like six takeaways when you stop people on downs, too. That, I consider that a turnover. But just really proud of the guys. I mean, we, we, we still got some tackling things that we need to clean up, but their effort is tremendous. Uh, they're playing with – you know, better knowledge. They're applying the knowledge better, uh, which is which is good to see the growth uh, in our team. We gave up, you know, really two plays uh, in that game, and uh, one just was a double move. We were in the right spot. Guy just beat us, and the other one was coming out the back door. We we played the wrong coverage. Uh, we should have been playing a cloud corner, and we we locked and ran with the receiver. But um, we really position wise were where we needed to be, and so really proud of of how they played. And, and then they created a lot of turnovers. And it's another thing to create turnovers, but it's also where are those turnovers occurring? They set the offense up for some really good scores. I and mean, we had 17 points off of turnovers. 
So just, you know, a dominant performance and uh, so many young guys getting in there. I mean, here's a guy, Trenton Simpson, I think goes in and leads us in tackles in, in a half. And uh, here's, he's a true freshman that's learning as he goes. And, uh, you know, I just think that uh, uh, got, he's got a bright future. But, but you see that really at all three levels. I mean, you see a lot of young guys, you know, making progress in the D-line, at linebacker, and in the secondary. All right, so as you take a look at this Syracuse ball club, they're down to like 60-something scholarships, but there's 60 scholarships that they're going to bring in here to play. They've been a little bit of a banged-up team, but Dino always seems to have this team ready and focused to take you on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. they'll be ready. Don't buy any of that, that stuff he tries to peddle. Uh, they'll be ready to go. This is a salty bunch, and, uh, you know, uh, they weren't very good in 2017, and I think they won four games, and one of them was against Clemson, and we were a playoff team. So, in fact, they were the last, I think that's the last team to beat us. Um, so we've got a lot of respect for them. A couple years ago when they were here, we all know what happened in that game. Uh, it was a battle to the end. You know, Chase Price made a huge play there to T. Higgins uh, to, to give us a chance to win the game. So we, we've got a lot of respect for Syracuse. I'm not, you know, hey, whatever's happened, if you really, if you really break it down, you know, it was a 10-6 game in the fourth quarter, you know, against North Carolina. Uh, it was a tight game, you know, against Pitt. They beat Georgia Tech by three scores. Uh, so, you know, they didn't show up and play against Liberty. They just didn't show up, you know, for whatever reason. But they'll show up to play the Tigers, and we know that. And, and, uh, but for us, it's, again, it's about Clemson. It's about us. You know, growing up, and as I said, you know, starting to become. You know, I want to see some wisdom. You know, it's one thing to gain some knowledge, and we've done that. And, and knowledge is knowing what to do, knowing how to do it. You know, wisdom is knowing why to do it. And so, you know, we've got some guys that kind of got to learn why, the bigger picture of things, uh, so that we can be more precise in what we do. And uh, when you have that bigger picture understanding, the details you know, you've got a chance to have precision and better timing and some things. So, you know, we're still a work in progress, but we're where we want to be and excited for the challenge of Syracuse. 3-3-5 three, three, defense they'll throw at you. They've had a penchant for creating the turnover, uh, you know, from, from that, and they're going to try to do that to you again. They're going to try to force force Trevor into bad decisions. Yeah, I don't, I don't, if you ask Tony, would say the same thing. I don't really know that we can classify them as anything right now. They. They, they're, they're, they're just all, they play everything, uh, especially early downs. I mean, it's, they, they bring, but they've created a lot of turnovers. Now they've given up a lot of big plays too. So they're a little bit feast or famine, uh, you know, but they, they are, they're a challenge to kind of get a hold of early just by nature. They're doing a lot of things on defense and uh, some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. Uh, so we've got to be smart. We got to do a great job of communicating, making sure we're on the same page. You know, we've got to we got to spread them out and make them have to identify some things a little bit. Um, you know, try to get control of the line of scrimmage. You know, with the run game and uh, and go from there. But 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 we got to first of all, we got to do a good job of getting everybody on the same page and get them targeted the right way uh, because they don't just line up. They're they're uh, they're all over the place. All the best to you today. Appreciate it. You know, there were a lot of things in that interview that I really loved, and, and I have to just mention one of them. Yeah, I saw where, you writing something yeah, down. Yeah, you know, I, I loved several things, but one of them when he was when Coach Sweeney said, knowledge is knowing what to do, but wisdom is knowing why you're doing it. Man, that was like – a major line. Yes. I mean, that's something you can take with you outside of football, just into regular life, knowing, you know, what to do versus knowing why you're doing it. Man, that was a good nugget of, of wisdom, you know, pun intended, um, today from Coach Sweeney. I always hear great things from him. Also good to see uh, Don. Don was wearing his pink shirt for Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. Don will be up in the booth if you want to listen on the Clemson Tigers network side to the radio crew with Reggie Merriweather and then Grant Radakovich will be doing the sidelines duty for the Clemson Tigers network radio crew today. You see some fans still making it into the stadium and a lot of folks are already inside. We should have the full capacity, 19,000 plus for the ball game today. And again, just absolutely 
perfect weather. The breeze is blowing just enough. Daja, you couldn't have dialed it up better than this. Absolutely. There'll be some other great games today around the ACC. Let's take a look at those. Yeah, you've got – there's some interesting matchups today. This first one I've got my eye on for sure, a North Carolina State taking on North Carolina. North Carolina, of course, got upset by Florida State last week. NC State missing their quarterback, so that'll be interesting. Uh, also, FSU and Louisville squaring off. Both of those games at 12 o'clock. Notre Dame at Pitt today at 3.30. Watch out, Fighting Irish. Pitt is tough to beat at home. That could be an interesting one. Virginia Tech at Wake at 3.30. Georgia Tech at Boston College at 4. The nightcap is Virginia at Miami. And Virginia, Dodge has really been disappointing since the game they played against us. They have not played well since then. Miami's looking to continue to take care of business as they work their way back up the polls after getting stomped by our Tigers. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing about having a noon game like this one. Most of the games are at the same time or way after you. So we don't have any scores to go through right now around the ACC, but some really what should be some really exciting matches, uh, matchups today around the ACC. Well, it looks like Tiger Band's getting Death Valley ready to go. Why don't we peek in on them and listen into a little bit of their performance? If you're just joining us now, welcome back to Death Valley Live, presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo bringing you closer to the Clemson Tiger action than ever before. We appreciate our friends at Wells Fargo. Next week, Daja, during Tiger Rag, because I bet you still know the routine. I probably this is my version never of you knowing the routine. Forget it. Probably. I was going to say you could do it on it's set here, and we could cut back me. and forth. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, fans. Well, this week's Founders All Access features an inside look into the All In Foundation for Breast Cancer Awareness. Check out this video to see what the foundation is all about. Hey Tiger fans, my name is Lexi Vick and I am the Marketing and Communications Coordinator for Dabo's All-In Team Foundation. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and that's one of the main focus areas for the All-In Foundation. So we thought it would be cool to show you guys some of the pink Nike gear um, that the players and staff might be seen wearing on the sidelines this week against Syracuse. The first thing that's really cool is that each year the athletic department does a breast cancer awareness pin. This year it's pink with an orange paw so you can check that out in some of the Fanatic stores. Without further ado, let's go visit Nick in the equipment room and see what he's got for the guys today. What's up guys, I'm Nick Yared. I'm the Director of Student Athlete Equipment here at Clemson Football. And this week, we're gonna be wearing some pink. Um, we're excited to show support for breast cancer awareness. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So for this game against Syracuse, um, we're gonna have some pink accessories and we're really excited about it. Our guys always love the pink game because they get to show their support for breast cancer awareness and they get to look good while they do it. Um, so for this week, you can see we got some pink things here. Um, to start it out, we're wearing our traditional game jerseys. We got our orange jersey here, white pants, you know, business suits as usual. Uh, we have the pink super bad here for gloves, pink vapor jet. Those look really sweet. Our guys are gonna be really excited about those there. We got pink wrist tape, pink single wide wristbands, 
double wide wristbands, bicep bands, skull wraps. I know you guys see a lot of our players wearing these on the sideline. They look really good. Pink arm sleeves. So we've got it all. And that pink really looks good with our, our orange jersey. Um, so we're super excited about it. I know our guys are fired up about it. They always look forward to this week. Um, so we can't wait to get out there and, and see how good they look on the field. Daj, I'd go all kinds of pink if I was playing in the ball I game really today. I really want to see you in a skull cap. Pink skull cap. Let's make that happen, <laughs> Lexi Vic. I'll I hate, wear it next I hate week. that we didn't Don't have like gear to come back with like wristbands and tape and there like marking a skull cap. That would have been a look, Mark. I feel like <laughs> that would be awesome. Of course, we're so, um, you know, always this is a really special game. We know that Breast Cancer Awareness Month and, and, and really just the entire uh, breast cancer awareness is really important to Mrs. Kathleen and Coach Sweeney and, and a lot of work that they do with the All In Foundation um, is really important. Important. No, it really is. And uh, we also have another important moment coming up. We're going to have the national anthem here in a minute, followed by it's one of my favorite things, Daja. We do it a couple of times every year. I think it's Mike Money that drives all this up. The Bandit Flight Team, it's a nonprofit team with a mission of honoring our military men and women doing a flyover today. Love these. And they're going to be coming right. I don't know which direction they're coming from, but we're going to get to see them. They're coming east to west. They're coming east to west. They'll be coming right over our head. We'll see them after they finish uh, the flyover. It's going to be great stuff. Yeah, always one of my favorite moments. When I was a cheerleader, no question. It's always really, really cool to experience that. Yep, and we have Military Appreciation Day, which will be the final home game of the year against Pitt. So I'm expecting we'll see the usual flyover with that as well. So we did have that designation. We should see the Tigers on all purple for that game is what they usually go with on Military Appreciation Day. So we got the pink today. we got the purple coming up. And we'll sa sandwich some orange for over. Halloween next weekend in between. It'll be good stuff. All right, we're going to go on and throw it over into the stadium now to listen to the National Anthem for today, followed by this awesome flyover that we're excited about. Even had a camera in flight today. Amazing stuff with the flyover. What an incredible moment. And it's really exciting to be a part of that. That's the Bandit Flight Team. Again, a nonprofit team with a mission of honoring our military men and women. Can't think of a better way to do that than what they just did. That was awesome. No question. It's always really, really exciting to be inside the stadium and experience that and just look up and you hear that noise and hear those guys coming, man. It's just it's just really cool. I saw you taking video. Can you send that to me? I will. I, I was I not will, on my I, game. I got, a, I got a really good look, too. Oh, great. Please <laughs> send that to me. I want to I have that. Thank you. So we got all kinds of pregame traditions, yeah. obviously. This is making it a, a more important, I mean, this is becoming part of pregame tradition, obviously, with the Military Appreciation Day flyover and then the one today. Coming up on uh, the best pregame in the country, Dodge, as we get ready for this and the running down the hill, the touching of the rock. Does it get any better than that? It really doesn't. I cried like a baby my last home game oh, cheering. And, you know, I we're bet. we're running the flag and we're jumping it up and down. And, I, I mean, I there's probably a really bad picture of me just ugly crying somewhere. It's okay. You can do that. <laughs> it's just so special. You know, you can't help yourself. Yeah, and I believe it was CJ's final game, CJ Spillers, where he was uh, waving it around. Let's go to the entrance video uh, now. If you are lucky enough to ever witness this, you will not forget it. Perhaps the grandest entrance in sports.
earned the right to wear the jersey. You've earned the right to put the helmet on, adorned by the paw. This is the, the culmination of preparation. And the only way you get to touch that rock is you have to earn it. And this is their destination. This rock that was brought from Death Valley, California, placed to top that hill by Coach Frank Howard. get off the bus, enter Death Valley, and approach this rock. It's emotional. The intensity of the moment is very real. gonna give 110 percent to keep their filthy hands off my rock. The players have boarded the buses. We're taking a look right now thanks to our Coca-Cola bus cam. You know one thing that I love about what Coach Sweeney said in that video there is he talks about the intensity of the moment. I think this year it's incredibly important to really mention that because we don't know if next week we'll be able to play college football. So you have to not take these moments for granted to be able to stand up on the top of that hill, rub that rock, you know, and run down it because you don't know when your last opportunity will be. So you have to soak those moments up and that's why it's so special to be able to take a look thanks to the Coca-Cola bus cam of these guys riding the bus around to a really intense emotional special moment um, that leads up to the 25 most exciting seconds in college football. Bus is about to make the last turn to get over there right by the rock. Love this. Looks great during the day too. I mean, we've had night games or, right. or late afternoon game afternoon games so far this season. It's just such a beautiful day to see those buses coming around, see these players get off the buses, get ready to run down the hill and get this ball game underway. Clemson looking to go to 6-0 on the season. They're looking to win their 27th consecutive game against an ACC opponent. They're attempting to win a 26th consecutive home game. That's already a school record for the longest one in history. They're entering the game having won 34 consecutive regular season games. Some ridiculous streaks on the line for the Tigers. Also attempting to push its winning streak in Saturday games to 49. That's the longest Saturday winning streak in FBS history. There's Dabo ready to go. Yeah, this is just, you know, one of those traditions that it doesn't matter if it's your first time, your 1,000th time, you know, watching this moment. It just still just gets that blood flowing and puts chills, you know, down the back of your neck. It's just really exciting to watch. And, man, I get so hyped every time. I do, too. The band and the cheerleaders are on the hill, which kind of brings a nice different look yeah. to it this year that I've enjoyed. Two weeks ago against Miami, there was some rain, and I was cautioning the players. I'm like, you got to be really careful running down that hill today. They can just let it go. And we're seeing another shot of the flyover here. No, they're coming back over again. Even better. Look at this. What? Coming back for a second flyover. It's a live shot. Coming over again. I love it, a double flyover. I know, how do we get so lucky? Bandit flight team providing that. The cannon has sounded. The Tigers are making their way down onto the field, try to run their record to 6-0 and on the season and take down the Syracuse Orange. I mean, this is just really cool. They're circling around right over our heads, and these Tigers are coming down the hill, getting ready for an exciting football game against the Syracuse Orange. All right, folks, turn your TV to the ACC Network or tune your radio to the Clemson Tigers Network. We'll be back at halftime for more Death Valley Live. Enjoy the game. Conference right now. They're at 0-4 in the league. Last year, you may remember, they